was an unusually warm November day and it was a Monday afternoon. I had the rare occasion of having that day off. So I got my bike out and took it for a spin and I met up with a friend of mine. We hadn't been on the road terribly long. We went down into the Hawking Hills, which is a beautiful area to ride in. It was just a leisurely ride. It wasn't, we didn't have anywhere to be. It was beautiful. This is the part where I, I don't remember details. We were in the Hogging Hills on 374, um, which takes you to Cantwell Cliffs. And there's a curve right before Cantwell Cliffs. Um, so there was enough distance between he and I on the motorcycles um, that the assumption is that he might have stirred up a deer and the deer ran out in front of me. Um, I hit my brakes and when I should have laid down the bike, something on my bike grabbed the pavement and I high sided um, and I landed almost directly on my head. I'm a fairly new rider, so yes, I wear my helmet. Um, I went back and forth that day. Um, for a long time before I got on to leave because I hated helmets and I didn't want to wear the helmet. I almost left my house without the helmet. Um, for some reason, I still put it on and I'm grateful that I did. So I had a little bit of road rash, not much. Um, I had uh, three broken ribs and a broken scapula. The brain bleed, the traumatic brain injury was my biggest obstacle. Um, and because of that injury, I don't remember much of November and December. I have two girls, um, two teenage girls. I'm currently a single mom. I'm going through a divorce. Um, and their world has been turned upside down already with all of the changes and everything. So the impact of my accident impacted them terribly. Um, and I'm still here. I'm still here because I was wearing a helmet that day. Um, and I'm still here to be their mom. And they didn't have to watch me pass. They didn't have to bury me. Um, and I, I can't imagine what that would have looked like for their lives. Uh, my choice to wear that helmet that day saved my life. The Saved by a Helmet Award um, is a, an amazing award. And if my story can impact one person, um, to be able to bring somebody home to their family and save a life, then, then that one person is worth this. I received an award um, just a couple weeks ago at the Fortress in Obetz. I got there, I met the people from Motorcycle Ohio, and I talked to them for a little bit, hung out with them until they were ready for me to go on stage. Um, we went on stage and I told my story, received a helmet and an award, um, and then after coming off of the stage, um, the QFM photographer for the event um, approached me and she asked me where my motorcycle accident was, if it was on 374 in front of Campbell Cliffs, and I, I said yes. Um, and she said, I've been wondering about you. And she's the one that made my 911 phone call. So it was an amazing, an amazing opportunity. Um, I literally had just prayed on my way to that event um, because the friend that I was riding with the day of my accident um, was talking to me and he reminded me that the events of that day and even though the, the first responders were there, it was the bikers helping bikers um, that started that process and it was the couple that arrived that made the 911 phone call that started that process that saved my life. So on my way to the event, I literally prayed out loud in my truck, if you could just give me the opportunity to cross paths with that couple so I can tell them thank you in person. And he heard me and he gave me that opportunity and it was amazing. We decided to take a ride down the Hawking Hills. It was like really late in the year, November, and it was like unusually warm. And we always look for roads that we've never been on, you know, traveling new places and we decided, oh, let's tried this road we've never been up on this road and we were kind of like working our way back north and all of a sudden we just you know we come up and we, look, we see this bike pulled over and a truck pulled over and all of a sudden we're like oh my god there's somebody in the middle of the road and we're like oh you know we're freaking out because we're like oh my god this is you know motorcycle crash is like the worst you know 
worst the nightmare for anybody on a bike. And we come up and, you know, we just see this person laying in a heap in the middle of the road on this the turn, it was kind of dark. Bike clear over on the other side, person in the middle of the road, and just there was nobody else around. And we're like, they said, it just happened. And I just remember, you know, calling to, you know, make sure somebody had already called 911 because it's kind of like a sketchy cell phone area. So called and, and they said, okay, we, you know, we got people on the way, we're fine. So we're, and my next thing was like, well, there's nobody blocking traffic. I mean, she's on a turn, it's kind of dark. And we was like, we got to get traffic blocked because there's you know, nothing there. So my husband went to one end of the road. I went up the road a little bit further and just tried to stop cars because my, my next fear was someone's going to come flying around these turns and they're going to run her over because she's right in the middle of the road. And we can't move her because at that point, um, I think she was still unconscious because she was not moving. And they said, well, you know, she's still alive, but she's unconscious. So we're just like, and then after about five, ten minutes, we see her and she's trying to get up and finally, um, Somebody that just happened to come rolling up on the scene was an EMT person, so he got out and was, you know, trying to help her keep her down. And then we stayed long enough till you know um, the police arrived, Sail Patrol, and the ambulances arrived, and we just kind of got out of the way and we figured, okay, everything's taken care of. We need to just get out of the way, and so we left. I am one of the event photographers for QFM 96, and one of the things I cover is the bike nights. So I happened to be there that night, and um, they've been doing the Save by the Helmet, you know, every week that we've been there. And then when she got up and kind of just looked at her, and I'm like, she kind of looks familiar. And then when I started hearing more about her story, I was like, oh my God, I think this is this is the woman that was in the motorcycle accident that we found that we came upon. So I actually went to uh, Christy Kemper and I'm like, oh my God, Christy, I'm like, I, I know this girl's story. We were there. We were the first ones to roll up on the scene after her crash. And she's like, you got to go talk to her. You have to go talk to her. You got to go talk to her now. And then, you know, after that, just what, you know, kind of went up and asked her about it because I knew it was a very unique situation that, you know, for the time of the year. And I asked her if, you know, where her location was that her crash was, if it was at the Cantwell Cliff entrance area. She's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, wow. I said, this is really freaky. I was kind of, kind of a little freaked out about it. I think she kind of was like, oh my God, I'm, this is so weird that we just happened to be at the same place at the same time for all this to happen. And I was so happy to see her standing there because, you know, we, I'd heard that her injuries were pretty severe. So, you know, I was kind of shocked to see her standing there all, you know, so soon. I mean, this is considered so soon after an accident of that severity. Everything happens for a reason. And it was kind of, you know, some reason we were both brought to the same place at the same time. Even though there's thousands and thousands of bikers everywhere, it's still a very small, tight family, and you look out for one another. It's like it's kind of like the biker code. Mm -hmm.